we're in fucking in danger. Like shit's getting broken. Like we're in glass capital. Is it fucking like, worth it to just keep going? Maybe we should just take it as a sign. Maybe we should just be like, okay. It's time to go home. Everyone wants to go back in. Is it like that? Make it back. I'm down. You guys are down. God damn it, boy, how he kind of morphed into King Elephant. We added our bass player, and now we're just hitting the ground running with it. We're getting this full length knocked out. We're trying to plan a national next summer. And uh, just playing as many shows as we possibly can. And being on top of our shit and making it like a real band. Basically, this time around, we're just going to be no BS, straightforward. Let the songs stand on their own. DIY is an ethical stance we take in how we run our day-to-day and -day like big picture band plans. It's uh, basically being a self-sufficient machine and that if something that you're being reliant on that is out, that is of external sourcing, then if it goes under or something happens to it, you're not going to be affected in any way because you're not tied to it. That everything you need can be created within the band. And so that's just taking like self-sustaining measures like uh, maintaining your own equipment, being your own roadie, making your own merch, booking your own shows, and booking your own tours. Anything you can do yourself, do yourself. King Elephant's going on a month-long semi-national tour, going from the Northwest down to the Midwest, down to the Southeast, up to New York, and then going across the North. And it's gonna take about about 30 days to do. Please, give us money! <laughs> <laughs>and I've noticed that when some people, you've mentioned that you're into punk rock, you know, it, by definition it means you know, you are fomenting for anarchy, you are down with the government, you're trying to smash the system and all these different things. And maybe that was in the back of my mind, but what I got out of DOI is just a chance to like make a lot of stuff. You know, it was like, like here was our opportunity to kind of like lift up a little corner in, of, a, of a tent or something and just like sneak a bunch of our stuff in. It was for me, punk rock, DIY has always been more about making than being part of some 
um, movement to bring down the system. And that's the interesting part about it is it's really not about that at all. It's not about like not conforming to something. It's not about reacting against something. I don't think at all. I think Missoula is case in point of that. Like I think so much stuff here has been done by someone themselves or with other people, you know, from the ground up in a non-traditional way, <laughs> you know, that to the point where you, you almost, you just take it for granted. You know, but at the same time, how many people look at that and don't understand that, like, wow, I got some really good pizza at that place the other night. Like, don't understand that someone just just built that, you know, <laughs> you know, from nothing. Um, or, you know, wow, I got to check out this band at this at this weird festival that they have in Missoula every August. You know, like, same thing with that, that all that stuff was just built from nothing at all, you know, and that's how it all came together. So to other people, though, you know, like people that aren't necessarily clued into that kind of culture. I mean, I'm just saying someone that lives here in Missoula that, you know, has no idea that there's local bands putting out their own records. When they become aware of it, it's like, whoa, bands still do that, you know? So I don't know, DIY, I think like, I think a person just has to sort of like look at it differently and say, what's important to me? Is it, is it basically that I want to be entertained or do I care about art in some kind of way? Do I want to hear some person's unique expression? It's not to say that Britney Spears doesn't do her own sort of like unique expression, you know, but ultimately I don't really care. You know, I guess I don't really have a lot of, for whatever reason, you know, probably it's spoiled by the trillions of people that are already interested in it, you know, and it's my own sort of contrarianism, um, but I'd much rather hear somebody you know, on a smaller scale, <laughs> share their art with me or, you know, buy a record from somebody who not many people know about or, you know, that's sort of, you know, out there sort of beating, beating the streets themselves without a huge sort of support network and, and humongous kind of business behind it. We're doing this because we care about it, because it is the only medium that has spoken to us and resonated with us in such a way that we cannot let it fall in to someone else's hands to be controlled by someone else. This is us. This is who we are. This is what we are presenting to you as a passive consumer of the arts. Feel free to passively consume our art, but we want you to be actively engaged. That's why, we're, that's why we play in houses and basements. That's why we record all our shit ourselves. Because this isn't, this isn't some glossy print for you to like, you know, toss on your fucking coffee table. This is something for you to have in your face. This is for, something for you to not react to, but something to act with. It's just not having to rely on anybody else. It's like, if you want to, that's what I like about, you know, if, if you're a band and you want to put a record out, man, you can put a record out. You can, you, you can go record it and you can find the company to press the records or the CDs or whatever you want to do and you can get it out there yourself. Most people that have a band learn how to use equipment that they install onto their own computer to be able to record themselves or to be able to do their own graphic design. And everybody's got a phone that's basically a computer in their pocket and they can take band photos or pictures of their album that they're trying to sell or pictures of their new t-shirt that they're trying to promote and throw it online instantly. And this process that used to take weeks or months a decade ago takes a couple of days now. And there's literally 10 or 100 times as many people that are capable of doing all of this sophisticated digital media um, than there was in the past. They've been like programmed to seeing music as like a commodity that's fed to them, you know, like television, MT, you know, commercials and whatnot, you know, uh, radio, um, American Idol, that bullshit, you know, they make, you know, they manufacture a an artist, you know. Um, so I think a lot of people just think that's the way it works. They don't realize that a lot of bands still do it by constantly touring, self-releasing their own records, 
setting up a network. In my mind, as long as we're writing songs, we're playing songs, um, people want to hear it and people are listening to it, it's a success. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it ended up on the radio, I don't feel like I'd be upset about that, but in no way is that the goal. That's not the end game at all. I don't really care if I sell a million copies of something. I just, if I sell one, that's a success. Someone, if someone wants to pay me money to hear this stuff that I, you know, made up with a guitar in my bedroom at 4 a.m., that's success right there. That's, that's amazing. Scrabs a range, a, a wide range of activity that in the context that I'm talking about, the context that, that you know, I kind of came up with, with Josh Vanek, it means doing music stuff yourself. It means like learning how to silkscreen, learning all these things, at least trying. And uh, for that reason, maybe claiming some little piece of autonomy, you know, like you're not beholden to the machine or the man or technology or, or even the limitations of your own talent, you know, you're not going to let it get you down. You're just going to find a way to, to do it yourself. Once again, you're listening to 89.9 KBJ Missoula. More specifically, you're listening to Dirty Flannel. Uh, we have been talking with Joey Running Crane of King Elephant uh, on the e on this the eve of their of their national tour, um, and uh, in support of a show that's going down this evening over at uh, at Zoo City Feral. Uh, what song should we listen to next, Joey? Ah, uh, let's do. Um, I guess we got one option here. Yeah, let's do old cars, old houses. All right, cool. when there's obstacles. 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 He's like carrying up the head and he's like, just trying to get ahead in life. Everyone look off in the distance. Like you're really <laughs> being deep. Awkward family photos. Oh yeah, we do that too. Everyone come in. <laughs> <laughs>
we went to our uh, we went to our friend's place in in uh, Moscow, Idaho, to record a couple songs for a split that we're going to release. With Metallica, three, Andrew Lincoln, Metallica 3000. I think they're changing their name or something. And so we didn't have a show in Moscow, but we went and recorded there that day and recorded a couple songs for a split. Finally find that bottle won't cure what's keeping you awake. I think I got it. You want to hear it? Sure. I like the way that ends. The touch of him. The bass guitar. I really like the tone of the bass on that. Yeah. Oh no, what do you guys think? I'm okay it. with it. I'm okay, okay with it. it. It's imperfect, but I kind of like that about I it. I think we need to just keep going. Yeah. Just keep pressing on. Um, dog breath. To Spokane to play our first show, our first out of town show. And that was a good time. We, we met some really good people. How long are you going to be out? So you hear something from Montana? Yeah. Cool. Missoula? Nice. Four of six. You know Tyson? Tyson Value? Yeah. Yeah. He's um putting out our putting out a split for us with Andrew Lee. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and so we went to Moscow to record two songs for it. Cool. God, that, just everything that happened that night was so much fun. Riding, climbing on the roof, and getting stuck. <laughs> I can see my house from here. I can see Bosco from here. Yeah, the, I, I hate to use the term hippie because I feel like it's derogatory, but yeah, it seemed like kind of hippie there. And, uh, but everyone was really nice, really cool. They were all super into it, like dancing and moving around. And anyways, the next night we went to Bellingham. Shave them, and you just like saw my legs. I'm like, damn, I bet that girl's fine. <laughs> Be like, yep, it's me. <laughs> There's no question. It's like, oh, that girl's a Russian princess. <laughs> She's ready. played a show with like this noise band and then like this weird post-rock band at this house. And... The house was pretty strange because we played with an ambient project and then an electro project or something.
Spectacular. I can't believe this is all done with a synthesizer. Wow. Oh shit. What else coming out? Sounds like yesterday. It's pretty recent, if anything. Oh man, there we go. Um, performed by the Spheric Sounds. Olympia was amazing, like Olympia and Philadelphia were probably our best shows. We just have a lot of friends in Olympia and they really take the music over there seriously. That show ruled. Just like, like 50 some kids. We played really well. And then Shark Pack played, and Shark Pack's the greatest band ever. from my PC friends in the Olympia area. Meth pipe, bird shit. Meth pipe, bird shit. Wow, mom, fuck you, dad. Meth pipe, bird shit, Rick Roll, dick breath. <laughs> <laughs> Sexy boys. Rough pup, hello. Rough pup. Totally Rough pup wow, mom, fuck you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Get sex, kids. 
doing it wrong. No, fuck off. <laughs> this is Smurf jazz. I love it. Smurf jazz. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, Brittany! Whoa! How many Smurfs do you have to? Get there? <laughs> <laughs> How many Smurfs do you have to? Just into a big tiny. That was amazing. How many Smurfs did that take, man? How can you always make yourself look so goddamn cute? Can you always make us look like fucking ugly old men? Are you trying to tell us something, Ethan? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm in pain. Turn that off. Hold up. Just listen to this part. I listen to when I'm feeling down. Fuck off, Toby Keith. We were supposed to play Pocatello the night after, and then that fell through, but then we got last minute added to a show in uh, Caldwell at this house called the Android House and we played with uh, this grindcore band and this power violence band and I remember the grindcore band their guitar player played naked and I didn't realize it for a long time because everyone was like pointing at him and I like, looked over and there's someone blocking my vision and I was like, what? I moved at one point and I like saw him and I was like, sure enough, I'm not wearing anything playing his guitar it was, kind of, it was kind of a weird show. It was good though. It's fun. There will be faith. There will be thunder. Throw out my hand. And it'll just be me and you. And there will be no other. It was after like West Coast shows that everything kind of got shitty. Like Boise was really shitty. You know we're really low on merch, we're really, really low on funds and we're really, we're struggling right now. And um, so I just kind of want to know how you guys feel. Like do we want to, if we bunch through that means we're all going to have to be in it. We're all going to have to be like, we're all going to have to be on we're going to be, but which here's, means giving your own money, which means being really in debt when we get home. Being really in debt when we get home. Which I'm already eight grand in the hole. I'm going to be 800 by the time it's home. We have van, we have the van stuff to pay off. We have a lot of different things going on back home. And maybe we can reschedule. Maybe we can go southwest in the winter or fall or something. Just go for two weeks or something. Yeah. But yeah, no, we've I, done. We, this was a really good job for the Northwest. And they're like stoked stove dog. And so what I'm thinking is, um, no matter what, we just push through to Denver. We play Denver, and if we have a show in Omaha, we play Omaha. If we can get anything else, we'll keep and going. so I'm gonna fucking make a shit ton of phone calls tonight and tomorrow, and try and get something. On, try and get us on a couple shows going out to the coast. If it ain't happening though, then it ain't fucking happening. We really need to decide. What we're doing. This whole thing's been a blast. And yeah. I mean, you guys have been really helpful too. Yeah. You guys have all been absolutely. really involved and focused, and that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, next time we'll be now that we've made we now that we made the mistakes, we'll come back and we're gonna fucking tear the whole country in glass. Yeah. And then fucking we're gonna do it to Europe, and then we're gonna fucking take over the goddamn world because I know we can do it because we're a great fucking band. Driver, you run away. 
I'll be a guarded compound If you decide to stay Things aren't perfect, I know But I think it's time to go I'm feeling so much older these days But I'm not sure if anyone can tell And I'm not sure if I want them to But I rewind the date when they matter Will you be my co-pilot if we fly away? If my ship drifts away Things are getting better, I know When I think it's time to go And I'm feeling so much more these days I'd really like to show those guys what we can do. Build some more fan base, you know? Make connections so this next tour doesn't, like, um, Suck. have us sitting in Walmart for yeah. four hours. <laughs> that was fun, though. I don't know what you're talking about. That was not fun. We <laughs> great magazine. I think that physically we're drained, emotionally we're drained, and ideologically we're drained. Same thing. I don't want anybody to be in debt, and if you're already worried worried about it, it's just gonna get worse and just build on that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and like I also think point of no return. Um, on the bright side, though, maybe six days is what we need. If we're drained right now, maybe four, five, six days is time for you to call people or see what we can do. Take a break. Maybe get in a lake or something. I've been wanting to do that. Yeah, that's something I want. So maybe like a break won't be that bad. Honestly, I feel like the bads really outweigh the goods as far as the band goes. I don't, I'm not taking into account at all my own cash. I don't care. But as a band, I think the bads really outweigh the goods. What do you mean? The Just because the only thing we have going right now is that we have a, a few good shows on the coast right now. Yeah. They're all solid and they're all good. They're done. But... You know, I guess in summation, that's how I feel about things, is that things are just really a little too sketchy for me to say, let's just fucking do it. If it were just me, if everybody was on the same wavelength as me, then I'd be gung ho for it, and we'd all fucking do it, and we'd rock it, and we'd be fine. But I'm just worried that not everybody's on board. So, with going, with just, with just pushing forward. The only thing in, uh, my biggest concern is that we're going to start turning on each other. Um, kind of feel a lot of, I'm feeling tension among us. And, uh, I don't think that we're, I don't think we're communicating as well as we should be. And I don't think we're, uh, I don't think we always listen to each other as much as we should. 
um, that's that's just all of us. Like it's not one person over the other or anything. We all are kind of guilty of it. That is such bad luck, which sucks. But that's not putting me off at all. It would be really beneficial to me, to my relationship, to go. Is that what you think, or is that what Haley thinks? I, I, that's what I think. You sure you were saying something different yesterday? What was I saying yesterday? You were saying that if this tour continues, you don't think it's gonna happen. Mm. Hey, you read that text, man. I know. You, you read what I had to say about that. That shouldn't matter. I know it shouldn't, but it's just how me and he, it's, that's really it's unfair what she's doing to you, man. Really unfair. She should be excited for you. This should be something she's proud of you for. Instead, I hear you apologizing on the phone for hours at a time. You're not with us. You don't. You don't come hang out with us. We need you. We want you here. If you need help with something, we'll help you out. You know I will not hesitate to buy you smokes. I have the money. You know that. If you're hungry, I'm not going to let you fucking starve. So you know I want you here. Yeah. But fuck that noise, man. Seriously. I'm sorry, I'm done with pussyfooting with this shit. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. And I've kept my mouth shut about it, so it really pissed me off when she was getting my business about things. Assuming that I was keeping things from Lily, which I wasn't. That pissed me the fuck off. I'm not mad at you at all, man. I'm furious with her. That's so unfair. Yeah. There's like, it's, it's complicated, but I understand it. I, I do see it as unfairness. Because, and, not, and this is how she's affecting us right now. Because the only thing I'm hearing from you is that she needs you home and you need to be home with her, which you don't. So she's affecting us. She's breaking up our solidarity and our cohesion right now because we're all on board with this right now. And I know that if she wasn't telling you those things, you would be too. All of us want to do this. And I know you do too. But you still got that little voice in the back of your head saying, oh, come home, come home. The voice in my head's mainly telling me, is this tour worth the me and Haley's relationship? Is it? Don't say, like, you, no, no, you can't look at it that way. You can't look at it that way. You should not have to choose that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That is not the case here. You can have both, and you should have both. But she's making, she's the one who's making you decide that. She's putting that ultimatum on you. You shouldn't have to decide that, man. Fuck that. Seriously, fuck that right into the ground. We need to talk. We need... Basically, we need to take this a little more seriously than we have been. I feel like, yeah, it's cool if we like party and hang out and do all that. Cause I mean, fuck, this is vacation pretty much. But we also have to take this very seriously. We can't fall apart as a unit. We're all in this together. We can't let anything get fucked up. If like, I don't know. We really need to just like start looking at things as we're doing this, then we're. No one can freak out on anybody. If you do, then you two have to, then the two of you, or the three of you, whoever freaks out on whoever has to go talk about it. Like, I don't want our fucking band to break up <laughs> for some stupid bullshit but over like, I don't know. Well, like two cigarettes left and like all three of us want one. <laughs> like, I don't want anything like that happen. So we really need to like, put our fucking word in that we're fucking brothers in this, we're not gonna fuck each other. Yeah. So, I got, are we game? 
Should we make the elephant? <laughs> <laughs> elephant ho. Who's the who's the tusks? Who's this the uh, was I the ears? You're the ears. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're both trunks. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean you're both. <laughs> Wait, what am I? You're the crown. Oh, I'm the crown. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, guys. yeah, first step on taking it seriously. <laughs> Someone brings it up, it's like, hey, we do have a show in Omaha, we should just go play that. And so that was kind of the selling point that everyone was on board to go play, to continue on for at least one more show. I think it ended up being like 10 hours, like a 10 hour drive. Got there, and no show. It doesn't matter, like... If there wasn't a show a week ago, there's no difference from between him telling us there's no show as opposed to being there one today. You know, yeah. updates would have been nice. How it fell through at the last fucking minute out, I really don't understand. I don't understand how that fucking works. I heard something about no service. You live in a fucking metropolitan area. Don't give me that fucking line. You had service. So are we pushing on east or going home? I think we gotta go home, dude. Okay. You know what really makes me nervous? It really gets my goat, but it's not we're so... I think we're a solid band. I think we're good. Like, I do, and... It's not like we're giving them, like, a gift by crazy them with our presents, but at the same time, it's like, man, we're not a bummer band. You don't have to sit through us for a half hour or a play shitty songs. We mean what we say and we try really hard. Joey said that like if he went back at that point he wouldn't have talked to anyone for months. That's really how I felt at the time too, is like if we went back I wouldn't have wanted to go outside or to any shows or anything. So we ended up getting a hotel room in Omaha, which was really weird. We like camped out there for like three days and it was really fun and me and Ethan got some writing done and we wrote songs for the next record and everything and just sat around and everyone shotgunned beers and, and uh, just kind of killed time and ate a lot of Little Caesars hot and ready. It was pretty disgusting. So then after the uh, Omaha debacle, we uh, went over to um, Jonesboro, Illinois, and hung out in this cabin for a few days, and um, that was pretty cool too. We we got to practice in the basement. It was air conditioned. We ate really well. Yeah, ended up deciding to update everybody on how everything was going. So we were just like, dude, we should make this fucking. We should make like a little like trailer so everyone knows how uh, life is out here. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you come in. My name's Ethan J. Yule, lead lead guitarist of King Elephant. I just got done having sex with a girl, and I decided to update everyone on the status of King Elephant's 2012 national tour. We just wanted to take this time to assure you that your investments are being put to good use, a contribution to the advancement of the DIY culture and the punk movement. <laughs> As I was saying, you should be proud that you supported a homegrown, down-to-earth, handsome, modest musical project starring Ethan J. Yule, that's me. Of course, we wanted to show you what your fiscal involvement has brought to us, a vanguard of humble minstrels. Firstly, our monolith of transport, our van. Uh, <laughs> second off, our, our merchandise used to cater to our over-hungry fan base. <laughs> and lastly, tour expenses. Well, it's been a wild ride, and it's hardly half over, but the March of King Elephant rides on, coming to a town near you. Let me sit in bed and watch True Blood all day. You betcha!
because I am freaked out on cocaine and I have uh, <laughs> got the weirdest rash on my chuckle. Oh fuck, I'm sorry. Let's go right there. All right. And then Ethan got us on a show in Bloomington, Illinois. Originally thought it was Bloomington, Indiana. And so we're set and ready to go to Bloomington, Indiana. And then it turns out that it was a fucking trip to Bloomington, Illinois. Do it one more time. No, we are apostle. It's our first track, all right. <laughs> Say, I can feel it tonight. <laughs> Say praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. <laughs> but do it like you're singing. No, no. Praise <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, my fucking God, dude. Oh, that was beautiful. Holy like you're fuck. my favorite fucking holy fuck that was In awesome. the whole world because of that. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Like it was like a hardcore bunch like a bunch of hardcore like a hardcore scene. Very hardcore y people over there, like preaching brother. Yeah, straight edge. They're like, yeah, like everyone when they're preaching, like they're preaching between their songs, those guys, woo! Yeah, really getting into it. I don't know, I think everyone was just really frayed from all the other experiences that like any sign of adversity got really stressful. There were people with shirts that just said the brotherhood and people were straight edge and it was like really, really weird. I remember I was giving my rant before old cars, old houses and I just kind of brought it up, you know, I was like, and just remember that being able to drink free of stigma is a privilege and that shit kills people, and like the four straight edge dudes are like, yeah! Like, you can hear me in the background? <laughs> I was like, cool. Like, I, I noticed beforehand that there were like some other guys hanging out at a house like next door. And I was like, oh, they're just like partying. So we left Booster on the phone with What's Her Face and Joey on the phone, and all of us like went to Walmart. And by the time like we got back, when we pulled up, he was like screaming at this guy. money came up in the situation like I was talking about Omaha. I was like, well, we, 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 we was basically saying we got completely fucked in Omaha, you know. And um, I was like, we look running low on cash, and that guy I was having that pleasant moment with was saying, like, don't, don't one of you guys have rich parents? And I said, no, no, none of us have rich parents. <laughs> and then someone said, well, they, would they be allowed to say so even if they did have rich parents? <laughs> I laughed about that, and I was like, yeah, of course not, man. And then I said, man, I'm, I'm from a fucking reservation, man. I, of course I don't have rich parents. He's like, but you have all that free Indian money, right? I was like, no, actually, I don't. There's no such thing as that. And um, he's like, no, no, man. Like, seriously, like, don't, didn't you apply for that? Didn't you get, like, all that money for, like, school and shit? And I was like, no, that's not fucking true, man. He's like, no, my neighbor, my my neighbor's Indian, didn't even fucking have the goddamn common courtesy to ask which tribe I am and referred me as my tribal name. Fucking keeps referring to me as Indian, his Indian neighbor. He said, no, man, that's not true because my fucking, my Indian neighbor, she's Indian, she got that too, and she got free college. I'm like, I don't give a fuck about your fucking Indian neighbor. That's two different tribes of two different fucking states. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So at that point, it started getting a little heated, so I went up to him got in his face about it, and I was like, no, that ain't fucking true, man. He's like, what's the big deal here? He's like, what you're insinuating right now is I get free fucking handouts from the government, and that ain't fucking true, so fuck you. I got really, really pissed off at him. And then as I'm walking away, he's like, you not Indian enough? I should have just fucking, uh. like, went over there, grabbed his fucking shirt, and said, that'll get you killed if you say that to the wrong fucking person. That's what I should have fucking told him. Well, one day it will. Let it go. No, no worth it. Just help me, God. Nothing like that is gonna happen to you this tour. After that, we went like we got like we settled down and we decided to like take a whole like what was it night? We had to like drive all night to get to DC in, in time for our show. It was scorching hot as usual, and then we decided to go check out the uh, Natural History Museum. We got limits on the meter, bro! 
Well, we got limited time. We're going to the museum. Museum of Natural History. Where's that? Is that right there? Right here. It's free fishing, right? Yeah. Fuck, what's wrong with texting here? Lily was upset about something yesterday. I texted her through it. We talked. That was that. Letters still convey things, not what happens in the voice. And that, oh god, DC. I mean, it was fun. So we got there, you know, we did like the free museum tour and like, well, not Booster, because he sat outside on his phone. Everyone went in, I had to stay. I was, I mean, like throughout the whole tour, me, you know, me and my girlfriend were fighting and I just feel, I just like, it's like a touchy subject, you know, I just don't like bringing it up. Here. But it's over and like done with. I feel like, I just like, every time I bring it up, it's just like, I just get like riddled with guilt. It's like not being like there, like kind of like, shit, I should have just done things differently. I shouldn't have like been so disconnected from the group, you know. I just feel like bad, like I just feel guilty about like even coming, like I feel like I, if I wasn't like in the place where in the place that I was during the tour, I think I would have like been a like a more positive influence on the outcome if that makes sense. <laughs> I might have influenced like us to keep going maybe, you know? And it came time to go play the show and so we loaded up into the van and we went to the show. Make your way back here and you can just park in one of those spots and just unload. Awesome. If you guys want to do that, I'll make sure the basement door is open. Alright, is it just a, do we go down to there? Yep, mm -hmm. I'll try and move the sandbags out of the way, but if it does keep raining, let me ask Tom about that real quick. The reason you slam the doors is because I'm tired of you. Shut that phone off. Right quick and not hurry. I think as your brother, she might listen to you if you just call her and catch her. She won't listen. I'll try, but she won't listen. Is she just missing like that? Is that How long was he in China? A month. Three weeks. Three weeks. What? Is it a light? Oh, we're good. Uh -huh. Thank you, though. Thank you. I just don't get how she can be like so insecure about it when me and Lily were apart for nine fucking months. That was hard. It was becoming really clear really quickly that it was a pretty rough little neighborhood. Yeah, it was weird. Like in, in the middle of the set, I got this really feel weird feeling in the pit of my stomach. Then I broke that string, threw my guitar down. I just I didn't feel good. Like so, we finished the set, and then Joey and I went and sat on the front steps. And we were both having this really weird feeling, like kind of trying to talk it out. I was like, I, I feel kind of weird too. Brittany takes the keys from me, and okay, so I go out to the car. I just look out the window, and there's glass everywhere. We don't even have a window anymore. I'm like, this will kill them. <laughs> like, if we didn't go home, like, yeah, we're gonna go home now. Goes out to the van and comes back, and she's like, well, window's broken on the van, so there's that. And we're like. And at first, I thought she was joking. I was like, don't, don't make that joke right now. And she's like, I'm not. I'm not joking. And so I let me and Ethan just jump up, run out to the van. And sure enough, there's just glass all over the goddamn sidewalk. And So Brittany runs downstairs, and she yells, uh, Ryan, someone broke into the van. And I think this is the point I broke my base. Is uh, I just threw it on the fucking ground, like, right after I heard that. I was like, fuck. And, like, this kind of did my 
average get pissed off immediately thing. We just ran. It was the most stressful thing. It was so awful. And Ethan's just like, not everything! Yeah! <laughs> Throw, he had a jug of water in his hand and he just throws it on the ground and he just throws himself to the ground and just throws his hands up and just is cursing the gods. He's so, he's just crying because he just thought like his computer was gone and I'm just like, we got to check the van. Like, and I remember like his was in a locked briefcase and so I like take it and I like put it down like out of the van and I'm like, trying to just do what little inventory I could because my shit was all there and it was in the, like, it was clearly visible, but it didn't, it was still there. I said something about, like, how, like, how are we going to fix this or, like, what are we going to do about this? And then he said, we're going home. And just fucking heart broke right there. I was like, well, fuck, Ahab got the whale, I guess. I was like, I don't know, it's just fucking bullshit. And, um, so we kind of, decided it was like fuck this we're like going to philly at least kind of brought some reality into the situation and a definite homesickness in everyone i think that's where like pretty much the tip like a good like tipping point where the as far as morale goes like when we had our window busted out i thought that was it for sure We uh, took off from D.C. and um, went to our last, what would become our last show, you know. We just, at that point, we were just like, we can't finish it out. And it, once the window was broken, we were just really distraught, really bummed out. And they were just like, we can't finish this thing out. It's just, it's going to kill us if we, if we finish this thing. And it was just such bullshit when I look back at it. It was like, it was just a window. There's so much we could have done to like keep anything bad from happening and we had the money to do it. We could have just finished it out, but you know, that's that's whatever. And so we we would we, we decided that the last show would be Philly. Philly, best fucking show, not only of tour, but I think I've ever played in my entire life. Just, it was so much fucking fun. And like, I don't think it was the alcohol, I don't think it was like anything more than just like the the energy and like the way everyone, like how stoked everyone was and how happy everyone was. Philly was awesome though. I got to see all my friends. Play with some bands I really like. Yeah, we played really well. Played a really good show, like probably the best show of tour. The whole like was just the whole feel. He was like looking up and just seeing like a basement full of like 
just filled with kids like really looking. The basement shows are something magical about them. I just get like just get me all just like when I play my best when I sweat and when I'm like smothered with people in basementness under the dark confines of a basement. <laughs> There's people in this room that need to give us some money so we can give money to people for gas. And maybe crunch wraps of creams. Please, come on, we're gonna do this. Just come on. <laughs> I don't have any money, but I do have a great right particular set of skills. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you're here. Some belly button money. Does anyone want the rest of my Arizona? Just kidding. I'm hot as shit. Like that first song really set the mood. It's like, shit, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> The first song, honestly, I was like, oh, this is going to be upset. I remember the time we got to, um, and then when we were doing Getaway Drive, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> That was like the second half of it was that was fucked up the first half. Yeah, dude. <laughs> 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 so then we got like halfway through it like the second verse. <laughs> What's that? So after every song, everyone is funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sometimes, every now and again, I'll sing a song and it'll give me chills. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what happened to me every day. Whoa! Awesome. I, I, I released it. Yeah. Do you like how I ended the first set? Oh yeah. Excuse me. We're partying. <laughs> Some no fully for y'all right quick, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Acapella, no beat, no no nothing, you know what I'm saying? I go for days, man. I, I, I go for days, man. I got bars for days. Like, even as a young and I was told how to cook up. Walking with my head down, I always said, look up. Took box the wall. Some niggas got shook up. Mom said, son, go to school. Pick a book up. I said, no. Nah. Black ski mask, one piece dicky. That's my hookup. Because if you want war, prepare for it. Rugas, HKs, you know I got the gear for it. Baby mama trusted, so I told her I'll be there for it. Grip the Glock, hit the block, even shed a tear for it. Niggas from my old squad, they want to be my new squad. Because I took the brewer back and left in a new ride. 740 fizz out. White outside, black inside, look like a zebra. Ride like a cowboy with two eight yelling yee ha. I ain't go to Oral Reed, nigga. I went to Reed High. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I went to Reed High. I got this for days, man. I got bars for days, man. It's non stop, man. It's non stop. Can I get on that? And yeah, this dude, is I truly. Get on that. I got as many bars as you This got, is truly, I'm not a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not a rapper, you know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler, you know what I'm saying? And that don't mean I sell drugs necessarily, you know what I'm saying? I got a water ice stand, you know what I'm saying? I sell water ice, adult, and both. Chicken and steak, you know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler, man. I sell crack to a motherfucking crack kid. I sell water to a, I sell salt to the salt man. I sell snow to the fucking climate, man. You got me fucked up. I'm a hustler, man. I'm a hustler, man. Yeah. That's crazy. That's good, man. The next day when we we're packing up and leaving, they uh just remember like getting really choked up and like really like not knowing exactly how to like feel about bailing on it i just kind of had to like say fuck it you're you're going home like it's just they're all it's all there is to it we like got up and we're, that was pretty much it we were on our way home 
it was like it was like bummers like we could have like like i think like the option was either to s start heading home or like push forward to new york and finish out the shows over there and then just head home but everyone like me me and ethan really wanted to get going home and everyone like, i know it's just like the morale of everyone was down i guess according to joey we were would have been able to finish out the last shows but it was just time to go everyone it was just it was just time I really wanted to press on like after after um Philadelphia cuz I wanted to hang out with Cassie and all my friends in NJ and like friends in New York too I was just I was so worried about like the safety of everything like how it would be and I I don't know if I have to justify it or anything but I was happy that like I went on tour and like learned all the things I did and met you guys, but I was kind of like it's over, boo. We didn't even go to New Jersey and we didn't like we didn't do these things. We didn't go to Chicago. I was really looking forward to Chicago. Like I had friends there that I wanted to see and but instead, you know, we had to call and or no we didn't, but Joey I'm assuming and Ethan like all and be like, we're not gonna come. Like, we aren't gonna do it. We're not gonna finish. I don't know. It just surprised me that it happened like that because, like, they talk so much about like the connections that they've made and like getting someone to like put you on and and be willing to like have you play there and their venue and have you like sleep there ultimately and and then you just call and you're like, no, I'm not coming. Like, what does that say? Like. As a, as a band, like, I feel I, f I feel guilty about it. Like I, I like I like I've been saying a few like more times. I've, I feel kind of guilty about it. Right? Not kind of. Like I do feel guilty about it. And we'd like, had like a, big old like talk about it. Like not wait like wicked. I've not not as like wicked as I wanted it to be. Booster had his priorities, and in retrospect and in hindsight, I can't guilt him for having his priorities and I can't in all good conscience be mad at him for his decisions and what he wanted to do and in the end we respected his wishes and we did it but um you know we'd just gotten done driving all day and I was exhausted we were all exhausted and I just in Jonesboro just kind of unloaded on him just just let him out, know how I was feeling, that I was mad. I was really mad that, like, we were all going into debt over this, and we were all hurting financially, and he, we were tired, too, and he just had it in his head that he needed to get home and that he needed to fix this and he needed to do that. And, and so I just let him know that it's like, I'm really upset about this, and I don't like how you're going about this, and it's kind of hurting us all. And that was that, you know. And he, um, he saw where I was coming from, and I saw where he was coming from, and we had to have that conversation, and it was fine, you know. But it's just a bummer of a time, I guess. Made our triumphant return back to Missoula. I got pretty I got pretty depressed for a second there like for about a week or so I was just horrendously depressed about everything because I felt like I had just failed. Like I had devoted my entire life and its waking existence for the past like 4 months, essentially 4 or 5 months essentially <laughs> to getting this thing off the ground and getting it together and I just felt like we just failed. We just fell on our fucking asses in the dirt. It seems like it's just such, so grossly oversimplifying of the entire journey just by like talking about it like that. It's like so, it just really fails to like really grasp the, uh, the gravity of all that shit that went down. That's why I filmed the whole thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs>
don't give me no napkins. Don't make no mess. You want me to bust you? No, head. I know what I'm doing. Give me some fish. That is my want. That is my wish. Give me that fish. Give me that fish. Say what now? Fish will lay with nothing on it. 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 Give me that fish.